So what are the challenges posed by the need to provide legal education to prepare students to enter a global legal environment, to work in the profession globally? Well, the first of those challenges is the caused by the greatly increased interaction in society across borders. You have both on the commercial side, you have many, many more transactions happening across borders. On a personal side, you have families, uh, you have estate issues, you have child custody issues, you have marriage and divorce issues, uh, you have tort issues, you also have even an enforcement of judgments. You have to start thinking about the ability to carry whatever judgment you have from one country to another. So the first challenge is really brought about just by the great interaction among people across borders. The second challenge is the greater diversity of law. It's really not possible anymore to just learn the law. You have to learn how to find the law. The law changes much more when you have this great diversity. So the third challenge then is the challenge that's posed among lawyers competing against each other. No longer is it possible to be comfortable just dealing with your client and hoping to carry their business around the world. If you're not able to meet the global challenge, if you're not able to represent them effectively when you're thinking about working in United States law, whether you're thinking about working in Chinese law or in Russian law, and you don't have the skills necessary to be able to carry that forward, then as a lawyer you will lose your clients or you will badly serve them. The fourth challenge posed is actually to the law professors themselves because the professors now need to not just teach the law, they need to teach the skills necessary in order to use the law effectively. And for many law professors, both in the United States and in common law countries, that's quite difficult. In the United States, most law professors have very, very little practical experience, one or two years, three or four years at most. In common law countries, there's, in civil law countries, they have more experience. Uh, there's much more movement between teaching and practice, but the tradition in the civil law countries is really what, much more of a scholarly approach to the law. So the challenge there is for the professors to change what they know, how they teach. What is it then that we have to teach? What's the substance of law that we have to teach to prepare students for global practice, to be part of global legal education? Well, the first issue that we have to focus on is the integration of international and transnational concepts into traditional courses. Just for example, it's impossible to conceive today of teaching a contracts course in a common law country or a legal obligations course in a civil law country without also integrating into that course concepts of the Vienna Convention on the International Sale of Goods. You can't teach antitrust law in the United States without also taking into account the European, anti, uh, the European competition law and vice versa because anybody who's involved in an antitrust case in the United States more likely than not is going to have European uh, activities as well and it's quite likely that the results in those two jurisdictions may well be different. So the second piece that we have to think about in terms of the substance of law that needs to be taught is that there needs to be a very great emphasis on conflicts of law on private international law. The issue of what happens when you have conflicting laws, conflicting procedures uh, among jurisdictions affecting the same kind of activity. And that course in the United States has tended to be fairly esoteric. It can't be. It's got to be part of the basic learning that students need to have at this point. The third area I'd focus on is actually teaching more students about other legal systems. Common law, law schools should be teaching their students at least something about the civil law, how to use the law, how to interpret the law. And in civil law countries, they need to understand more about common law systems because it's very, very difficult otherwise to cross over that divide between common to civil law and civil to common law without that kind of grounding. It's not enough to say, oh, civil law is just statutory interpretation. It's not. The way they interpret the statutes in civil law countries just doesn't work the same as it does in a common law country. So we need to fix 
the ability to help the students understand when they move to another kind of a jurisdiction, another system of law, how to work at least partly within that system. But beyond teaching substance of law, what is really important in educating students for global practice is the skill of being a lawyer. And that's so much more important than even the knowledge at this point. And that's what law schools should be providing to their students. It's no longer possible to just teach the substance of the law separate from how it's applied, how it's used. So the first thing students need to learn is to how to use the law as a tool. It's not a received text. It doesn't sit there and memorize. The law is a tool to be used. And so teaching students the ability to use the law effectively in multiple contexts is vitally important. Now, in the United States, we've taken a look at this several times. The first time this was looked at very, very seriously was in 1992 with the McCrate Report. That report, and then 15 years later, the Carnegie Foundation did a wonderful report as well. And both of those reports, although they took very different approaches, came out with the same basic answer, which is that students need to be taught lawyering skills and professionalism and that's what is missing in some of US legal education it's often said in US legal education that students are taught to think like lawyers well they're really not frankly what they're taught is to think like appellate judges and that's really not very useful when you're going in and trying to solve a problem for a client so instead they need to be taught they need to learn how to go in, how to think creatively, how to solve problems, how to do analysis and use it creatively because there's in law there shouldn't be just one answer at least from a practitioner's standpoint. From a judge's standpoint there's one answer but for, for practitioners there should be multiple ways to approach a problem to be able to solve it and the t law is the tool to find multiple approaches to solve a problem and then use the best one of those. So once students get the idea that law is a tool. What are they supposed to do with it? Well, the first is legal writing. All around the world, wherever I've been talking with employers, the most important skill that they always emphasize that they want the recent law graduates to have is legal writing skills. And without that, no matter what knowledge they have about the substance of the law, if they can't express it in written form, then it, they're useless to their clients. So in writing, First of all, they need to be able to write an expository form, descriptive. What is the law? Explain the law to the partner. Explain the law to the client. Second, transactional. They need to be able to take that law, distill it down into understand what the core principles are, and then never look at a case again. They have to be able to write contracts. They need to have to write settlement agreements. The third approach is in persuasive writing. No matter what court system you are in anywhere in the world, you need to file persuasive documents arguing your side in a case. Those are so much more important in terms of legal practice than the scholarly writing. I don't want to ignore scholarly writing. It's important for students to understand the theory of law, but many, many law schools overemphasize that at the expense of the practical side of legal writing. So beyond writing, what else? They need to be able to research. They need to be able to research in multiple jurisdictions. They need to be able to understand enough of the law to be able to give guidance to their clients or know when they or their clients are going to get into trouble or need more help with a lawyer expert in the law of another jurisdiction. Third, they need negotiation skills. This is a really important issue. The oral advocacy is a tradition which exists in common law countries, but much less so in civil law countries. But it's not possible to just stay within that comfort zone in the civil law countries. In one of the countries in which I served as legal education consultant, the lawyers there were fine so long as they were within the traditional system of filing papers for appeals and all the rest of that. But once they moved into alternative dispute resolution formats, they were getting killed. They were doing their, law, their clients an enormous disservice because they had no tradition of oral advocacy. And whether you're in, con in conciliation or in mediation or more formal arbitration formats, the oral advocacy is key to success. So students who don't come out of law school with an oral tradition are not going to be able to serve their clients well. So in addition to the oral advocacy on behalf of the client, the rest of 
the oral skills that are necessary are the negotiation skills. S lawyers, law students need to learn in a classroom setting first what the principles of good negotiation are. Now, the Harvard Project getting to yes is a great example of a way to teach students how to negotiate effectively. But they need to understand the basic principles of negotiation, what kind of a negotiator they are traditionally, to understand how to deal with other styles of negotiation, and to come out with a good result for their client. And that's both in a transactional setting, when they're making deals, it's in a dispute resolution setting, they need to be able to work and understand what the true art of negotiation is. It's not just something you absorb. You have to teach it, you have to learn it, you have to absorb it, you have to practice it. Beyond that, students should have some exposure to client counseling, no matter where they're going to be in the world. That's difficult to do in a classroom setting, but it's not impossible. You can have simulations, you can have, cl you can have clinics, ways for students to learn how to talk to clients, how to ask questions of clients. And then finally, they need training in ethics. Business doesn't work the same everywhere in the world. In the United States, there's strong codes of professional ethics. They aren't followed always as much as they might be. Those codes are not necessarily nearly as strong or as explicit in other countries. But everybody, no matter what country they're in, no matter what country they're going to practice in, needs to be trained in professional ethics. And without that, business falls apart. Without that, personal relationships fall apart. So that's a vitally important skill that students need to learn is to how to integrate ethics into everything that they do. So where does that leave us in terms of meeting the challenge of global legal education? In the past, it's been sufficient to teach students what? The substance of the law. That's really not sufficient anymore. In order to train students to be effective practitioners in a global legal environment, we need to teach the students how. It's the skills, the ability to use the what of the law, it's the ability to use the law as a tool to be a real practitioner of the law that is vitally important. Students need to learn how so much more than they need to know the what. And if we can teach our students both, the how and the what, then they will be prepared to meet the challenge of global legal practice.